Listen to this. St. Benedict writes in the rule of St. Benedict. First of all, every time you begin a good work, you must pray to him most earnestly to bring it to perfection. Whatever work it is, even if it's washing dishes or planting a garden or sewing a hem or putting a button back on, but especially in regard to beginning a good work that involves deepening our prayer life. And as I mentioned in the last video, St. Benedict's school is essentially a school of prayer where we are able to learn how to move beyond constantly trying to impose our selfish will on God through the vehicle of prayer. Benedict goes on to say, let us get up then. If we're, if we're committed to this journey, if we're tired of falling down, if we're tired of feeling empty and defeated in our prayer life, and we're ready to discover a way to deepen our prayer life, Benedict says, let us get up then at long last, for the scriptures rouse us when they say it is high time for us to arise from sleep. Let us open our eyes to the light that comes from God and our ears to the voice from heaven that every day calls out this charge. If you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. And again, you have heard you that have ears to hear, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. And what does He say? Come and listen to me, sons. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Run while you have the light of life, that the darkness of death may not overtake Our brothers you. and sisters in the monasteries and convents, they take vows of obedience, stability, and conversatio moral. As oblates, we don't, we don't make vows, we make promises to those same Benedictine principles of obedience, stability, and conversatio moral. Now, we could spend a lot of time talking about each one of those major areas of concern. But let's, for the purposes of this particular video, let's simply suffice it to say that everything regarding Benedictine obedience, as well as Benedictine stability, are designed around the monastic life primarily for the purpose of providing an arena, providing an environment where personal conversion can take That's place. That's the purpose. Conversatio morum is the, this, this business of conversion is the purpose, both the purpose and the goal of the monastery, of the the environment created by a monastery. And there's a lot of things that, you know, that, that surround that process and a lot of things that, that require responsibility on the parts of individuals. And, and Benedict lays out, out all of that in a fashion that creates balance. In creating that Benedictine balance, there is that opportunity for conversion of life. Obedience and stability are Benedictine steps toward achieving the goal of conversatio morum, conversion of life. Now, in the Benedictine vows, you don't find uh, vows to poverty or to chastity. 
uh, as part of the, the evangelical councils are poverty, chastity, and obedience. Now, poverty and chastity are inherently part of the Benedictine vows. Though they're not expressly named, they are still there. The principles are played out in the life of the community. One of the great things about this little book, you know, I've, I mentioned on the last video that, that both the church and the world needs something to wrap their minds around in this crazy time that we're living in. And a lot of, a lot of bad stuff has happened in the course of just a short while since my last video was made. Heartbreaking stuff. The world is the world it seems like it's just gone absolutely insane and people need something and yes we do have the scriptures the scriptures we must have the scriptures one of the things this little book is is simply a a program of how to use the scriptures how to use the gospel and present a program, a spiritual program that shows us how to live the gospel in, in the world that we live in, in the communities that we live in, in the churches that we live in. And that's really something that's very, very important. And this little book is both succinct and thorough at the same time. I've never, I've never stumbled across anything like this. I've, I've used a lot of quote spiritual programs over the course uh, the course of the decades uh, since 1978 when I did that trip down to the altar in that little country church that I grew up in and uh, and returned to as a young man uh, I've, I've used a lot of different programs uh, and they've all been good to a point but I've never discovered anything like the rule of St. Benedict, something that uh, you don't grow tired of it. You don't wear it out. It continues to work over and over again uh, in our lives. 